Imagine driving down the road, heading home from work, and you hear an ambulance. That ambulance is either rushing to a medical emergency or heading to the hospital with a patient. Either way, it needs to get where it's going as fast as possible. It needs priority. So you immediately pull over to give them a clear path to their destination. On a network, quality of service or QoS settings can give priority to certain types of traffic that shouldn't be delayed. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explain how to restrict internet bandwidth for a group of users using QoS on Cisco RV340 series routers. Next. To start the configuration, log into the router. Provide the username and password and click Login. Navigate to LAN and then VLAN settings to create a separate VLAN for the users for which you want to restrict the internet bandwidth. Now click Add under the VLAN table to add a new VLAN. Notice that VLAN 2 has been created. The IP address is 192.168.2.1 and the subnet mask is 255.255.255.0. Next, enable the DHCP server. You can see the IP address range start and IP address range end for the DHCP server we are enabling for VLAN 2. Users connecting to VLAN 2 will get the IP automatically from that IP address range. To save the settings, click Apply. VLAN 2 has now been created. Moving on, configure port LAN 2 for untagged traffic on VLAN 2. Select untagged traffic for VLAN 2 on port LAN 2 by clicking edit. As a result, any PC or laptop can be connected to this port to verify the service. Untag the traffic on this port since the PC, laptop, or network interface card cannot process the tagged VLAN traffic. Click apply to save the changes. As you can see, VLAN 2 traffic on port LAN 2 is untagged, so any system can connect to verify the service. Next, navigate to QoS and select the Traffic Classes option to configure the traffic classes. Traffic Classes channel internet traffic to the desired queue based on the service. The service can be Layer 4 TCP or UDP port application, source or destination IP address, DSCP, Receive Interface, OS, and Device Type. Move over to the Traffic table and click Add. Enter the class name as VLAN2 and 2 underscore VLAN2 for the description. Navigate to the Service table, click Add, and enter the Service Name field as 2 underscore VLAN2 and WAN1 as Receive Interface. This is the active WAN interface on the router. Choose IPv4 as the IP version. The source IP will remain as any, and the destination IP will remain as VLAN2. Next, enter 255.255.255.0 as the subnet mask. For the network service slash application, select all traffic from the drop-down menu. The device type and OS type are not editable, so they will stay as any. Keep the match DSCP as any and the rewrite DSCP as none. Click apply to save the settings. Next, to create the traffic class from VLAN 2 to WAN traffic, click add under service table and enter the class name as WAN. Provide the description as 2WAN. I will also use the service name as 2WAN. For the receive interface, enter VLAN 2 and IPv4 for the IP version. Set the source IP to 192.168.2.0 and the subnet mask to 255.255.255.0 for the VLAN 2 network. The destination IP will be set to any value, in this case 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. The service slash application will be set to all traffic and the device type will be set to any. To finish this task, click apply to save. Next, navigate to QoS and then WAN queuing to specify the queuing engine. There are three different modes, priority, rate control, and low latency, which are mutually exclusive. Select rate control so that you can define the minimum and maximum rate for each queue. 
Under the WAN queuing table, click Add to add the queuing policy. In the policy name field, enter rate underscore VLAN2 and VLAN2 for the description. Under the queuing rate control table, select the traffic class for Q1 from the drop down menu. I will go with WAN and keep the minimum and maximum rates at 1% for this scenario. I've limited the internet bandwidth to 10 megabits per second here. The capacity of the WAN is 1 gigabit per second or 1000 megabits per second, limiting the maximum rate to 1% or the bandwidth to 10 megabits per second. Click apply to save the changes. These settings may differ from the ones that were just configured. It depends on the bandwidth restriction you want to apply to your network. The rate control policy is now visible here. Next, navigate to QoS and then WAN policing. In WAN policing, the rate control mode supports eight queues. Each queue can be configured with a maximum rate. For Q1, choose VLAN 2 for the traffic class and reduce the maximum rate to 1% to restrict the traffic to 10 megabits per second. This is 1% of 1 gigabit per second, which means 1000 megabits per second. Click apply to save the changes. Make sure that you have enabled WAN policing for the WAN interfaces as well. As a result, check the box and then click apply to save the changes. The next step is configuring the WAN bandwidth management policy that will be applied to the outbound queuing policy. Navigate to QoS and then WAN bandwidth management. The WAN interfaces can be configured with a maximum bandwidth that is provided by your internet service provider. When the value or transfer rate in kilobits per second is configured, the traffic entering the interface is saved at that defined rate. In this section, I'll define the maximum bandwidth provided by your internet service provider, or ISP, for both the WAN interface and the active WAN interface. Keep the upstream and the downstream traffic for the WAN 1 interface at 10 million kilobits per second, which is the maximum capacity for the WAN 1 interface on this router. Your value may differ depending on the internet bandwidth you use and the WAN bandwidth restrictions you wish to impose. I'll select the outbound queuing policy from the dropdown as rate underscore VLAN 2 for the WAN 1 interface, the active interface. However, in your case, you may apply for both the WAN interface and any other interface where you want to restrict the bandwidth. Once you finalize the settings, click apply to save the changes. Now you can see that the changes have been applied. You can check WAN policing to see if it is enabled. When the WAN queuing policy is applied to the WAN 1 interface, you can see it in the WAN queuing table. Navigate to the traffic classes to verify that the traffic class VLAN 2 and WAN are in use. To save this configuration to the router's startup configuration file, click on the red blinking save icon. This will take you to the configuration management page where you can see that the source is set to running configuration and the destination is set to startup configuration. To save the settings, click apply. You will get a success notification pop up on the screen. Click okay. The configuration has been successfully completed and saved. You can now test the bandwidth restrictions by connecting your PC or laptop to VLAN 2. These settings keep priority data moving efficiently where it needs to go, just like that ambulance. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.